Hi, I'm James and thanks for tuning in to e Air. In this video, I'll be taking a look at the Sapphire AMD Radeon RX 6600, AMD's latest entry-level 6000 series GPU that allows gamers to run titles at 1080p, 60 to 100 frames per second without breaking the bank. In this video, I'll be unboxing the graphics card, checking out the connectivity, key functionality, and then of course testing it in some of my favourite titles, some of your guys' favourite titles as well, to really put it through its paces as far as performance goes. Let's see what Sapphire have done with the 6600 in this overview video. Let's do this. Unboxing the 6600, I'm really keen to see what kind of form factor Sapphire have opted for. I know from the size of the box that it is going to be on the smaller side. Something, of course, that's absolutely adequate when it comes to these lower-end, more entry-level graphics cards. When I say entry-level, this is all relative. We've already seen the huge gains that AMD have made with 6000 series and how popular the range has been from AMD, a company who's made a huge resurgence in the graphics card market as of late. And that answers my question. So we still have a dual fan cooler, something I like to see. Although it probably would operate fine with one fan, having the extra keeps temperatures lower, especially if you're in a room where the airflow maybe isn't quite as good. You also get a metal backplate, something I'm really pleased to see. Other board partners have gone for plastic backplates to save a bit of cash, but Sapphire haven't, and I appreciate that. You can feel it's metal uh, just by giving it a knock. On the front here as well, uh, you've got this nice design. It's very compact, fits well into a two slot form factor. It's also not too long, there will pop some specific dimensions on your screen now, allowing you to upgrade existing systems or build new ones without worrying about GPU clearance. It also runs off a singular 8-pin PCI power connector and can operate with as low as a 500 watt power supply. Here at eBuyer, we always advise you check power supply wattage requirements for all graphics cards and take into account other components you might have, which might use a bit more power than anticipated. All in all, the form factor is nice. Connectivity at the rear includes uh, two display ports, followed by a HDMI, followed by a further display port, allowing you to plug up three monitors with a display port, four panels in total. You really have got a lot of options when it comes to the 6600. 4K display outputs, of course, are no problem as well. And while 1080p gaming is certainly where this is aimed, if you're playing something like Valorant, a first person shooter with typically higher frame rates, 1440p is still very much in the equation as well. There's only really one way to actually test this though and prove to you guys how capable the 6600 is and that's by popping it into a system. So in the next part of this video, I'll be showing you how to install it, how to set it up with drivers and all that good stuff and then testing it out in some of the latest AAA titles. The first game that we're going to use as a gauge of the performance of the 6600 is GTA 5. Now, admittedly, this is a slightly older game, not quite as current as something like Apex Legends, but it does have a built-in benchmark mode and loads and loads of results from all the different cards on the market, allowing us to not only have a repeatable test, but also a good general gauge of the performance. So you can see here we're running at sort of medium settings pretty much across the board and we're going to run the games in built benchmarking mode. Remember that GTA 5 tops out at around about 190 frames a second. It won't go really any higher than that. So any results that we can get close to that with are going to be mightily appreciated. These settings are just a base to work off. You could definitely crank them higher if you wanted more uh, visual fidelity. But for us, I want to see what kind of frame rates we're able to get at 1080p middle of the road. Okay, so we are basically hitting that 190 frames per second limit, 187.56 to be precise. What we'll do is we'll wait for this run to finish, and then I'm going to tune some of our settings up to high and see how well the 6600 fares then. It's fair to say this has performed a lot better than I'd expected, and maybe I need to give the 6600 more credit when picking the settings to use. Be right back. Just to guide you through what I'm going to do, I've gone ahead and turned FXAA on. I'm going to whack our population density, population variety, and your distance scaling up to about halfway. Jump everything else to high settings, not very high or extreme or ultra, uh, just to high. Uh, make our shadows soft as opposed to sharp. That will just make things a bit more realistic. Leave post effects on normal. Uh, anastropic filtering, we'll pop that on times four. It goes all the way up to 16, uh, but we only need four for today. Ambient occlusion, whack that on normal. That's basically all of those major settings jumped up. So we hit save, restart the game, and then we'll run the benchmark mode once again and see how that impacts the numbers. But remember, the visual fidelity is gonna be way, way higher this time around. So anything above 60, 70 FPS in my book is a bit of a win. Um. I wasn't expecting this. Um, so we seem to be topping out 
at the 190 frames per second again. We've gone from normal medium with all of our population densities and varieties set to low to very high set, well, to high settings pretty much across the board. We've seen a few frame rate dips in the region of 120, but we're still getting very close to that 200 FPS mark. I think what we need to do is we need to go back in the settings one more time and we need to see if we can get that frame rate down, get the visual fidelity up. Maybe the 6600 is just much more of a 1440p card than I perhaps originally anticipated. Let's jump out of our GTA benchmark and I'll meet you again in the settings menu. So this time around, I think I'm going to pop things basically all the way up to full to see how the 6600 fares. When things are pushed that little bit further, settings are going to go to very high, uh, pretty much across the board. This is not something I'd recommend doing on more of an entry level GPU, but I do want to see what impact it has on the frame rate. We'll change that down to softer, pop that onto high as well, pop all of our density bars uh, right up to maximum, our aliasing up to eight times and that one on high. We'll apply those, we will need to restart the game, but then we'll jump into the benchmark mode again and see if we can finally drop below at the 190 FPS mark eventually. So on the face of it, that appears to be a little bit better around the 150 mark. There's nothing wrong with maxing out the frame rate in a game like GTA, but by doing so, you're leaving a bit of performance on the table as far as the visual fidelity goes. The 6600 with its 8 gigs of VRAM is a slice ahead of the competition as far as memory bandwidth and allocation goes. It does mean you can push settings that little bit further. And historically, AMD, while they've not been quite so strong on stuff like DLSS and ray tracing, have been pretty strong on straight rasterization, which does explain the solid results we've been able to achieve. Let's exit out of GTA though and try a couple of other titles on the 6600. The next game on our list today is a bit of Apex Legends. I'll jump into the exact settings we're using in just a moment, but for now you can see we're rocking around 130 frames per second. This is at full HD, there's no lag, no stuttering, no screen tearing, and visually the game looks pretty great. As a title, Apex often caps out around the 140 mark, so to be sitting at 139, 142, 161 is really not a bad result. In fact, it's very impressive uh, for Apex Legends. Yes, first kill of the game. He's knocked down. Let's finish him off before the rest of the team arrive. I've got no idea where the rest of his team are actually at. So this is looking a little bit touchy. Here we go. Get out of it. Oh, no, no, no. No, this is a disaster. Oh, goodness. No, no, no. I'm being shot at from goodness knows where. Get out of here. Get, he's got health going to be like, oh, no. I managed to eliminate this. I managed to eliminate him, but got eliminated by another squad. That is one of those moments where you need the rest of your team, but it is a good opportunity to return to the lobby, leave this match, and check out some of the settings we were using uh, to be sitting around the 140 frames a second mark. My key takeaway from all of this is just how impressed I am with the RX 6600, a card that sits at the entry-level point of AMD's 6000 series line, but is still able to provide some really great straight rasterization performance. Let's just take a look at the settings that were actually in play there. You can see video-wise, we're at full 1080p, uh, pretty much, wow, pretty much maximum settings, actually. All these are up to max, as you can see from the orange bar here, 16 times uh, anisotropic filtering. You've got insane for the VRAM limit. Of course, that makes sense. Uh, and we were on VSync, apparently, as well. So, I mean, I mean, this is just ri ridiculous, which explains why we're around that 160 mark a lot. This, honestly, this 6600 XT is like, I'm just going to take a moment to prove to you all that this is actually driving this monitor because these results are unreal. So this is a DisplayPort cable from the 6600 XT into the monitor. That, wow. Um, yeah, I'm for once on the eBuyer channel, and it happens very rarely, I am, um, I am lost for words. Fair play, AMD. Amazing stuff. Absolutely amazing. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a big old like rating, get subscribed to the eBuy channel for more, and follow us on our other social medias linked below. Check out the 6600 over on eBuy.com, and as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.